life for me. As you, as you said, you were, you, were the, um, you were the genius computer geek who were kind of counterculture. Now suddenly you're being invited to every party in Silicon Valley. Well, the funny thing is, I was the sort of person who tried to stay in the background, unseen, unheard. I didn't want to, I mean, I couldn't even speak before a crowd back then, but I, all I thought, I just still want to be just a quiet life, leave me alone. I just want to find a place all alone on my own. I'm, I'm real peaceful on my computer or whatever. And so now I just, the trouble is, I have these philosophies to be open, never to have an unlisted phone number, to always answer people, never hide out. So I answer the phone. You want to be on Dance with the Stars? I don't know, what is it? <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're, you know, apparently you're uh, in love with Kathy Griffin. I go to websites and we're dating. I don't know who she is. <laughs> this is true. Big Bang Theory called and my wife said, well, well, he doesn't watch TV. I'll have to watch it to see if he'd like it. Did <laughs> like he like it? Yeah, now I actually TiVo two shows. <laughs> Uh, a, a lot of the Sheldon attributes, very much like I'm more I'm talking these little technical bits of science of people all the time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not that deeply. I, I love his lines, but uh, and how he does, he works so hard. He deserves the Emmy he got and a Golden Globe. He deserves them because he's walking around all day long trying to learn his lines while everybody else is just, you know, kind of doodling. Okay, now we go and do the, re the rehearsal. And he's got a tough job. That's great. So, so if another TV show calls, he'll answer. Right? No, 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 they have to be the right one. I mean, I've kind of got a couple of top, top, top shows. That's right. Uh, That's let's right. see. Yeah, Kathy Griffiths was just incredible. So for all the entrepreneurs here in this audience, we'll talk about some of the lessons learned those first few days besides take what money you have and go out and, and build something. Make well, a step forward. I was a very strong technical part of it. So I always say entrepreneurship, make sure you've got the technical side covered. You just have sort of ideas about what could be done and we'll just buy the technical as a resource, maybe an Indian or something. That I don't I don't I don't advise that at all. You're gonna come, might come out with a, a product that you can raise money from venture capitals just with your paper ideas and not a real product that you build just do something. Actually make it and do it and show it. Um, I say do that first and you better and have some of those extreme technical guys, the young guys coming out of college or maybe they're in grad school or something, you know, that know how to put something together. Whoa, different and unexpected and better than the other guys, you know. You should start out with something with that kind of excellence. Um, I do urge that. And you should get a complete working model before you try to raise money from people. Other than you just have ideas, you're going to give everything away and it's going to be a very hard road to get to that working model and you're going to have to take more money and lose, yeah. lose percentages. And, and if it isn't personally worth a lot to you, that, that, that uh, dies out. So, um, so, so believe, but the main thing is you've got to believe in what you're doing. If you grow up like I did with ideas about computers, and you get a chance to work in computers, that's where your whole life wants to go. Yeah. You know, I was working in calculators for Hewlett Packard, and I wanted to be in computers. So, uh, you know, it was kind of like, like you know, you'll find, you, gotta, you should find your path and not, oh, I'm just doing it because I think this will make a successful company. Yeah. No. And you know what? And if, if you start a company, I also like to tell entrepreneurs, you go for a while, you go for a while, you go for a while, it's not clicking, you're not raising the money, you're not really getting there. Hey, if you have one good idea, you can have other good ideas. Yeah. Maybe it's time to just rethink out and do something else. So, in any way, did you get sad or lament the fact that as, as Apple got bigger and bigger and a big corporation and, and, and then evolved over the years? Yeah, I'm a very creative type, a very creative type person, almost like, uh, you know, rock musicians and, and other creative people I've met in, weird, in other categories, um, uh, magicians, yeah. uh, my friend David Blaine, or, you know, some of these guys. So, I, I kind of like when it got small, talking about new ideas, making them actually happen, do these things in a small group, all of a sudden you're a big business, oh my gosh, engineers have to say we can do this, 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 manager approves, that, 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 that. You can't even make a change as you go along the way, say, oh my gosh, I see what I could have done, but I don't have time, it's not on the schedule, it's not built into the number. I don't like that whole structured world. I like things unstructured. Even the way I use technology like iPhones, I much prefer to speak my commands into it, you know, navigate to Hyatt Regency in Sacramento. I, I mean, I'd much rather do that than type in stuff, follow the procedures and rules. So um, after Apple got that bid, well, you know, first of all, I thought, great, I'm a great engineer, but Apple now has enough quality engineers they are gonna be successful at their direction, with or without me. So that's why after a plane crash, it was, Easy for me to go back to Berkeley for my last year of college oh. to get a real degree. You know, things that things that matter to you in life. Yeah. You know, thank God I didn't give them up. 
I didn't give up a lot of those things. I wanted to teach fifth grade my whole life. I told my dad when I was in sixth grade, I want to be an engineer and I want to teach fifth grade. Then I went and did it for eight years, secretly, no press. And, um, and you know, these are, just, these are just things you want to do. So, you know, you'll always you just push yourself inside. The personal reasons are more important than outside reasons. What the ones you, that are in your head. What did you learn teaching fifth grade? What did I learn? Well, um, I can figure out what the, the first thing I learned. The first thing I learned, I was scared. I don't know if I can. <laughs> I learned I, I could teach them how to use computers for all their normal subjects. I didn't want to teach computer geeks to learn all the computer binary stuff I grew up with. No, you don't have to be like me. The world doesn't need everybody to understand how computers work to use them effectively in your normal daily life. That was the important thing. Um, and build in a lot of fun. It, it's a fun. You make the classes fun and uh, the kids will want to do the stuff that's actually learning. They'll learn so much better. And also, if, if you come home from a day as a teacher and the kids haven't learned, that's your saddest day as a teacher, you just come home sad, what happened? But I could go back, I was not an official teacher in a classroom. I could go back and reteach it the next day to get it learned. A different way, I could make it more interesting, and a normal teacher has to go to the next pages in the book. I, and that way, a lot of problems, you know, with regular schools that I wasn't subject to, so I couldn't really fail. I want to ask you about Silicon Valley, okay? For, and, and the reason being, obviously, the state of California has its share of challenges right now. Mm -hmm. And there are jobs leaving, and there's capital that's going elsewhere. But what, is Silicon Valley safe at, in, in terms of being the global technological hub? I mean, maybe not from Sacramento, but uh, within, but, I mean, just, just, <laughs> just uh, but I mean, are we safe here in California, or, or in 20 years, do you see us being a suburb to some global hub in Bangalore or Beijing? Um, basically, um, electronics development, I mean, look at, look at Apple. Apple's in Silicon Valley, so there the question's answered. Yeah. Google. Yeah. Yeah. We've, got a few, we've got a few of the such top players that are going to be around for an awfully long time. But electronics devices that are, going to be, are so important in our life will keep building. Every one of those companies that builds electronic devices and things, not just computer companies like Apple, but um, you know, even big machinery and stuff like that, there's still going to be that ongoing need. A lot of Silicon Valley is based upon entrepreneurship, starting new things, new companies with the hardware world are subject to Moore's Law coming to an end, that sort of thing. In other words, it could possibly come to the point that we can't build a better computer next year. See, so far we've been largely based upon we've got a better computer this year, something that does more for you, something smaller, a computer you can carry in your pocket. And, um, and theoretically, someday that could go away.